Before J.J. Abrams was asked to return to make the movie that would become The Rise of Skywalker, Colin Trevorrow had written and was slated to direct the original iteration of Episode 9, titled Duel of the Fates. From our joint coverage with Robert Meyer Burnett at the time, indications were clear that Trevorrow would have delivered a much better version of Episode 9 than what J.J. Abrams ultimately had done. In our recent interview with writer and producer Cameron Pasha, the conversation soon turned to how Agenda ruined Episode 9 why Trevorrow was fired from it, and how Bob Chapek may want to give Star Wars a fresh start going forward. Yeah, and then the whole deconstructing thing, I think we see in a lot of it, even though, you know, in recent years, people, it's gotten a cult following with kind of like Batman and Superman. But we've seen a lot of that with that at first. Like people were just like, it's too dark. It's too, you know, deconstruction, deconstruction, deconstruction. We've seen it with Luke. We've seen it now with so many other characters, even though some people liked Into the Spider-Verse. We did see it a little bit with Peter Parker, even though he does get redeemed at the end. Yeah, it's still this common part. trope. Yeah, It's still this common trope. And it especially seems to just affect ma mainly white male characters yeah, well, to be honest a, it is a conscious not even unconscious agenda it's a conscious agenda the funny thing is it, it's largely white males who are writing these stories in some ways it's a little bit of like get the spotlight off of me and i'll talk you know i don't and i'm just going to be the champion of this stuff i mean like and as i've said on other podcasts some of the most racist people i've come across in this town are people that are loudmouth progressive liberals who are the very caricature that they're talking about Right. And they're the ones writing a lot of these stories. Uh, you know, you'll see. And that's why you see, you know, what happened to Star Wars is you, you look at characters that had a lot of potential like Finn ultimately become this racist character right. by people who are proclaiming diversity. And look, we got this Asian woman there. And it's just like, why did you get this Asian woman, this bad character? Right. You know, I, and I, I, I don't know if you have you ever read the never filmed uh, a version of Episode nine, uh, the Duel of the Fates? Uh, most of it. Yeah, I, I've got it. Yeah, I, I mean, you may have a different opinion. I loved it. I think it was. I thought it was really good. I mean, compared to what we got, anyway. Yeah, compared to what we got, I mean, I thought you know, Colin Trevorrow. He, I mean, I have friends who know him very closely who work with him, and he's very much a real fan. And he was trying to get this franchise on track from the heart, based on the restrictions that were put on him. He's sort of told, you know, you can't have, you can't have, you know. You can have Luke Skywalker alive, fine. He still made Luke as a force ghost an active part of the story, right? In a very interesting way. And he did everything he could. And one of the amazing things about the script that we never saw is that Rose Tico was an incredible character. You know, I think it might have frozen there. Rose Tico in. in yeah, but we can still hear you. You're good. Rose Tico in Duel of Fate was an incredible character. I really loved her character. It's a character of someone who wasn't trying to. Here's an Asian woman to, so, you know, because I cared about diversity. There's like. Here's a character, I want to make her interesting, and I'm going to give her all these adventures that really challenge her and make her very important to the story. That's what it was about. And they, he had, Kyle Trevor had no need to prove that he wasn't a racist. So whenever someone needs to prove they're not a racist, that's always a red a flag to me. Well, and I mean, I don't know if you know any inside baseball on what went down as far as between him and the studio, um, I, but I, I know... Uh, and I don't know what you can say, but uh, like, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Like th that script felt like Star Wars. It not only, unlike JJ's uh, version of the film, which, you know, calls attention to the fact that it, you know, is making fun of The Last Jedi and has that wink, wink at the fans constantly. Like, no, yeah, it, yeah, it just went, I mean, he said, okay, well, I've been given The Last Jedi. He worked with it, yeah. I'm just going to go with it and I'm not going to insult it. I'm just going to keep building and, and get it back on a track. And he did, right? And you're like, yeah. Hey, the last jedi like i'm good with this if you don't like the last jedi like i'm good with this <laughs> you know so then it, it's the best what you can tell us then so what happened then as far as did they did they refuse to change things to where he could make it work in his script since carrie had died or was it com something completely different uh you know from what i've heard again i know people who are who are working with him right now so it's it's a deep intimate relationship right uh and so uh, that's how I got the script without revealing really gave it to me. Someone who's in his inner circle said, "Hey, may you want to take a look?" I was like, "Yeah, sure, I want to read this, right?" And so, you know, that guy had gotten it from uh, from from Trevor. So, uh, from what I've heard, is that Colin uh, first he you know first he thought you know he could get them to get Luke, Luke Skywalker back, and they said no. Luke Skywalker is dead. Yeah, I my understanding is he did try to convince Kathleen Kennedy to just change the Even fire. though they had a year to change it, yeah. And they yeah, could I, have, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, all you had to do was you just had to edit him fading out. You just didn't have to do that. And he's still alive. Yeah. That's it. And you just go off him staring off at the sunset. And you're like, what's going to happen next? I would have gone with that, right? Uh, and, and so then 
they just chose, but they're like, no, he's dead because we got to get this white dude out. And so he's dead. Uh, so you say, fine. Okay, he's dead. All right. Then he went back and uh, my understanding is he had written a script where Luke was alive. And they're like, no, you can't use that. Get rid of that. Okay. Then he went back. All right, let's, all right, fine. I'll do a new version of the script where Luke is a force ghost and he's taunting Ben and he's, and he's being an actual spiritual guide to Ray, which is, we saw, he's very active in that script. And, you know, and, and Carrie Fisher, you know, Leia was incredibly active in that story. And so of course, Leia, you know, Carrie Fisher dies. So that creates a problem that ultimately, you know, that what do you do now? I think that, Trevor, based on what I saw, could have figured out version three of that, right? He could have, because he clearly, he loves the franchise. My understanding is he was trying to come up with a way to make it work, but they just decided you're out. You know, you're out for two reasons. Just again, this is what I'm hearing. I don't know Mr. Trevor. I hope to know him someday. I love his work. But for what I heard were two reasons, which is that uh, one is he challenged Kathleen Kennedy and, and you know, and, and Mr. Johnson, and they didn't like that. They didn't like that he would have the audacity to say you should change this thing, right? They thought that is very threatening. So number one, he was already on on, on the crap list for them. Uh, and you know, num number two is that ultimately there's there's a factor. You know, he what Ms. Kennedy has been doing is that she keeps hiring these directors that are hot at the moment. So Colin had been hot, and then he had an independent film that didn't succeed and got bad reviews. And suddenly he's not hot anymore. And it was all about PR, like, I'm hiring the hottest directors. Oh, he got some bad reviews for a film, and he's been posing me on this, and he actually seems to really like the old version of the franchise with George Lucas that I don't, I don't want to be associated with. Let's just get rid of this guy. And it was a combination of these things, and I, from what my friends tell me, he was heartbroken. And, but he was an absolute professional. He's never bad-mouthed it. He's never bad mouthed anything that had to do with it. But my, what they tell me, he was heartbroken. He could, he was shocked and heartbroken. He didn't. He expected to be told, "All right, after Carrie died, rewrite the script again without Carrie. You made it work without without Mark, right? Now make it work without Carrie, or figure out a way to resolve it." And he wasn't given that opportunity, to my knowledge. Maybe he did write a script, but ultimately he was told, "You're out. You're done. We're just going to go back to JJ." And and he was hurt from what I tell. And uh, and I think his team, his. I mean, I think he's a, he's a man of great dignity from what I hear, a man of great, you know, integrity. So he just said, fine, I'm going to be a professional. I'm going to walk away. I'm not going to say anything about this. I'm going to move on to other things, right? His team, his people around him were really upset the, at the way he was treated. And so my understanding is that's how that script got leaked, is that he would, he just wanted to move on and put it behind him, move on to Jurassic World. And they said, no, man, you wrote a great script. And this would have been a better movie. And his team leaked it out, whether he was... Approved it or not, I don't know, but I've heard his team put it out there because they were so offended at what had been done to his reputation unjustly. Do you think Lucasfilm can be saved without burning it down first? Um, I think it's all in the process of being saved. From what I've said on Jeremy's channel, you know, I have friends who know and working with Jean Favreau, he's come in very aggressively. Uh, and I think, you know, Miss Kennedy's reign is essentially finished. Uh, you know, I know you guys have reported on that a lot, and I followed your reporting, and it, and it matches what I'm hearing from my friends in the Star Wars world. That essentially, you know, she's still there, she's still kicking around, but but uh, her power is largely gone. And I think Mr. Favreau, uh, working with Filoni and with Lucas, is putting Lucasfilm back on track. And I I do think the one thing I think Bob Chapek is committed to is getting is to fixing Star Wars. I mean, I think Iger couldn't do it because he would have to admit that he made a mistake, right? And that's right. the, and that's the good thing that uh, you know. Whenever there's a new regime, the the new regime always wants to put their imprint on it. And in this case, that's a good thing because Bob Chapek wants to show that he's not Bob Iger's toady, and that he's going to be the new leader. He wants to be the guy that people are writing biographies about. How Bob Chapek saved Disney, you know, twenty years from now, and uh, and so he's going to want to fix Star Wars. That's all I'm hearing is that he's like, we got to get this on track, and he knows. He's, he has no emotional commitment to anything that Iger did because he didn't do it, right? And so Iger had, for Iger to admit that he made a mistake in bringing Kathleen Kennedy, granted it was Lucas' mistake for appointing her, but not shutting down Kathleen Kennedy's vision early on, I, it's hard for Iger to admit that. Chapek's like, right, forget all that. I'm the new boss. I want people to remember me as the guy to save Star Wars, and that's a good thing. This video is comprised of two segments from our interview with Cameron Pasha. Be sure to check out the original unedited interview, as well as Cameron's own YouTube channel, both of which you'll find links to in the description below. Let us know how you feel about Kennedy's handling of Colin Trevorrow and if you think Bob Chapek will be able to salvage Star Wars in the comments.